Welcome everybody here in Twitch chat and everybody on YouTube for the metagame breakdown. So far uh, we've discussed the winners and losers, just some individual cards, 10 each from the patch 1.2 that's going to be going live on Wednesday at 1 p.m. Eastern and that's whenever I'm going to be starting my Wednesday stream. If you're watching this later on YouTube, it'll just be later on because this is posted early in the morning, so it'll be later on on Wednesday. But of course, for us right now, it'll be tomorrow morning. Um, but so what this video is going to be all about is what we're going to do is we're going to go to Mobile Addicts, uh, this website that I use to put all, all my deck lists on and everything. It's a really, really good resource for uh, decks and, and information. They have a new thing called Metastats on here, too. Um, and uh, we're just going to go to the tier list. There's, let's see, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 decks that they have on their tier list. And we'll kind of go through, break down each one of if we think that it's, uh, like, how it's going to be affected by the patch. Is it uh, going to be better, worse, um, and so on. All right, so let's, you know, start at the top. So we got Burn Aggro is our first deck. So this is, you know, kind of just a, a uh, stock burn aggro list um this deck i think is i think this is def this is definitely a deck that got hit uh, hit hard and maybe the hardest like yeah this deck maybe got hit the hardest with the patch it only had two cards affected we have legion rear guards now going to be a 3-1 and boom crew rookie is going to be a 1-3 kind of some synergy there but I think the, the biggest thing is Legion Rearguard being a 3-1. Really makes it tough to play Legion Rearguard. It it took it from being the best one drop to the worst one drop in the deck and really, really hurt it. And getting that one drop to be hurt like that, um, yeah, I think that's I think that's a really big deal for Burn Aggro. Boom Crew Rookie at 1-3, also pretty big nerf because now uh, you can kill it on turn two. You can have therm like basically the both of these nerfs made thermogenic beam amazing. Before, um, you know, if you if you have thermogenic beam on turn one, you and your opponent plays rear guard, you can't kill it. They're just, they're going to just smack you for three because your beam only does one damage. All right, so let's say you have thermogenic beam in hand and uh, they go turn two boom crew rookie. Well, now your thermogenic beam couldn't kill boom crew rookie. It could do three damage now. Uh, Boom Crew is a 1-3, though, so now it can kill Boom Crew Rookie. So a huge difference there. I do think that Thermogenic Beam's play is going to go up. I think that that card was one of the cards that I listed as a winner, but then kind of thought that was kind of boring, so I, I didn't actually include that in the video. But I do think that Thermogenic Beam has got a lot better, and now killing both of those is, is huge. But anyway, just in general, Boom Crew doesn't trade with, uh, you know, it's hard to just attack openly with Boom Crew Rookie. There's a lot of two mana three twos that will will eat Boom Crew Rookie. I think overall this this deck really got hurt a lot by that. Now we'll see. Um, you know we'll have to see. Now it could be that the metagame in general kind of turns a little bit slower. People maybe take out a few cards against Burn Aggro from their deck. Maybe they play less health potions and things like that, Withering Whale things like that, and. Uh, you know, thinking that maybe burn burn aggro is not as good, and then you can catch people by surprise, and then and then burn aggro can make a, a resurgence. You know, maybe that that's going to happen in a week or two. I I would not be surprised whatsoever. But for now, uh, I am expecting more bilge water. Uh, that's that's something that we'll kind of talk about. But I think bilge water is a, a region on the rise, and bilge water having make it rain kill legion regard. Um, you know, uh, now. Uh, Twisted Fates red card. Sorry, I don't know why I couldn't think of Twisted Fates name for just a second. Twisted Fates red card, um, getting rid of rear, rear guard and everything like that. Big deal. Now this deck can adapt. It's not even using any champions. There are good champions you can play. You can play Draven. You can play Jinx. Even going bigger, playing Vi and Swain and uh, Vladimir and champions like that. You can adapt and you can you can. Um, uh, change this deck up and mold it to to be uh, still kind of a aggressive style but maybe less uh, burn you know less all in um, aggro 
and can still uh, have a pretty good deck. And that's why I kind of expect it to, to happen. If you're playing Draven, maybe you play Draven's biggest fan in the one mana slot instead of Legion, Le uh, Legion Rearguard. That could be a possibility moving forward. But anyway, um, yeah, Burn Aggro definitely got hurt. All right, so Karma Lux. Um, this version, this version was really good against Burn. But if we have less burn, that's going to kind of hurt Karma Lux. A lot of these cards have changed. Karma's now 6 mana. Um, I guess I the Dragon didn't change. It was just in my loser section. Uh, Deep Meditation, now 5 mana. Grizzled Ranger, of course, now a 3-1. That makes a 3-4. Badger Bear, now a 3-4. Um, overall, I definitely think this deck got hurt. Because... <clears throat> Uh, I think that Karma, like, if we're talking about control mirror matches, I feel like I would rather be playing Karma Ezreal over Karma Lux, I think, especially with, like, these changes. Now, both both of those decks are playing Karma in Deep Meditation, so you're really only looking at, like, a Badger Bear kind of changing. Um, but I would expect, like, this list to change. I don't like Eye of the Dragon um, anymore. I don't like Health Potion that much either like this list would probably change but i think that you'd rather want to be um instead of having lux as a finisher i think you'd rather want to have ezreal as a finisher that is doing the combo kill and kind of being better against control decks than this so i, I do think karma lux got hurt but now with that being said i like some of the i still like lux i still like remembrance um i just not sure if like karma is the best fit for uh, these cards or not. Um, you say Ezreal Karma doesn't go doesn't do well with decks that go wide and Bilgewater goes pretty wide. So you think okay, so maybe Car Karma Lux is probably better against Bilgewater. That is true. With Karma Lux, you don't really mind pilfered goods as much. These these cards aren't like amazing to take off pilfer off pilfer goods where Karma Ezreal just you can just take re more removal spells and be able to kill their Karma and Ezreal with like your pilfer goods. So that's true. That's that's a good point. So you're so yeah. So you're saying if the more Bilgewater is, the better it is for Karma Lux. I could see that. I could see that. Bilgewater does really struggle killing Lux, and you don't really, you're not giving them removal for your champions. You know, you give them like Will of Ionia, but that's not really removal for their champions. I guess Concerted Strike or Single Combat, but it's hard for those things to take down, especially Single Combat. It's hard for that to take down Lux. So I could see that. I could see that. Overall, I'm still going to say down, but most likely still playable. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly how good this deck will be with the new changes with, you know, six mana karma. Like six mana karma with six mana lux, that, that does get kind of awkward where both your champions are taking the same spot of the curve. That does get awkward. Um but yeah, with with reduced Badger Bear, Grizzled Ranger, Deep Meditation, Karma, with all four of those nerfs in this deck, I'm not sure how this deck will play against uh deep strategies. Maokai decks. I could see it struggling there. But we'll have to see. Uh, but I, I think that this this deck, like, you know, with all these Radiant Guardians, all these health potions, I think this deck kind of feasted on aggro and uh, there may be less aggro. I guess last, last thing is, um, as I talked about in the winner section, um, elu I'm, I'm expecting elusives to make a comeback, and, and um, this deck is very bad against elusives. This deck is not like, like whenever you're playing elusives, like Karma Lux is like your one of your favorite matchups, because um, you're you're not you're not like killing any of their things, so they have to. Their only way to turn on like Radiant Guardian is to use a single combat and kill one of their things off, and then also play Radiant Guardian. Like that's hard to turn on. And then if they have that, then they probably don't have single combat for the Radiant Guardian to kill something else, because you just you just race them over the top, 
And they have, like, Will of Ionia as their only removal, basically. Um, yeah, I like that. So, that, that could be something that really hurts Lux Karma moving forward. Um, Karina Control, our next deck. This is one that I, I talked about in the loser section that I, I think that this deck actually got hit kind of hard. Um, it's not going to be unplayable. Now, like, there's going to be different different aspects, you know, to all of this. Like, we talked about Karma Lux. Like, maybe it's kind of better if, if there's more bilge water, but then also maybe it's worse if there's more um, elusives and things like that. So, like, there's... It's, it's not just straightforward with everything. All right, with Karina Control, I talked about how Elise is worse with Brood Awakening getting nerfed, and Brood Awakening going to six mana does make it more difficult to play in this kind of deck and just a control deck where you're basically playing Brood Awakening for the raw stats. It's a lot harder to play that card at six mana. Um, and there, therefore, if we're not playing that card, it does make it harder to play Elise. I don't like Frenzied Skitter in this deck. Whenever we played Karina Control the other day, I, I had zero Frenzied Skitters. I don't think you need this card. Um, like this list that we're looking at here, I don't like this list isn't very good in my opinion. I really think you need get excited in this deck. I think get excited is really important because you need uh, like you need Ledros to reduce their life total and then have Mystic Shot, get excited, and Atrocity help finish them off. I don't think Vi Vi is going to be a two four. I don't think that makes Vi unplayable. I I think that Vi is still going to be very good. Um, just all these decks with Vi, I I don't think that I don't think the Vi being a two four instead of a two five is going to change very much with Vi. Where like Frenzied Skitter being a three two instead of a three three was huge. I I think Vi is still very good. And uh, will often you'll often be able to use this as a removal spell that stays around and can trade with something else as well. It doesn't trade as well against Demacia, no. But it it traded ridiculously well against Demacia before. It could just always it could always eat five drops and then still stay alive and trade with something else. Now it doesn't really eat five drops. It eats you know one two three four drops and then still stays alive and trades with something else um i think it's still really good i think people i think people are sleeping on on buy now <laughs> i think it's i don't think it's going to change much how good that card is but i think that uh brood awakening is definitely a lot worse at six instead of five i think withering whale is worse i think there's just going to be um less like burn and uh, everything. So I talked about how Withering Whale and Elise were both on my, my losers part, Elise because of the Brood Awakening. And so that's why I think this deck's kind of a loser. Because I think this deck really preyed on Burn. And I think if, if Elise, Brood Awakening, Withering Whale, if all those cards are worse, and, uh, you know, Vi is a little worse by default. It's still very good, but, uh, you know, just by... You have to say it's worse. Now, with that being said, it could... You can still tune. You can still retune this kind of deck. Like maybe you move away from from those cards. Maybe you fit another champion in here. Maybe you have like Thresh to pair with Vi, and then some other earlier cards. Maybe I don't know. Um, could have more like Ruination. If we're talking about how Ruination was like a winner, if there's more slower control decks, maybe Ledros is a is a good way to win games. Ledros plus Atrocity. So maybe there's something here. To Karina, Veraza, Ledros, Ruination, Atrocity, Control. You know, maybe it just has to adapt and uh, change and everything like that. Um, uh, yes, it does. It does. That is true. Yes. Um, Brood Awakening does gain... Uh, yes, it does gain Mage Seeker Synergy. I, I, I did want to put the Mage Seekers on my... my uh, my winner's list, but didn't end up doing that. But yeah, I was already planning on playing Mage Seeker Thresh. Um, but yeah, I like Brood Awakening with that now too. I think that the, the um, like for example, like in, in Karma Lux, like we, like I don't like Eye of the Dragon. I really like uh, the Mage Seeker. Like we, we played this the other day. I really like, I don't remember exactly which Mage Seeker it is. I think Persuader. I think Mage Seeker Persuader is the two mana three, two. Um, that's where I want to be, not Eye of the Dragon. 
in Karma Lux. But yeah, I really like Mage Seeker Persuader moving forward. And yeah, Brood Awakening can, can do some extra stuff there. But for this deck, um, I think this deck overall has gotten worse, but it does have the ability to to change. And I, I think it I think it will need to change just a little bit. Yeah, change around around the edges. Okay. Uh Heimer control. This this thing. I call this I call this deck Vimerdinger. I think that's that's a good name for this. Putting Vi and Heimerdinger together. I think this deck's gotten better. It sure Vi got a little nerfed. Yes, but like like I was talking about before, I think Vi is still plenty good, and I don't think that that nerf is really uh, too much. This is the deck that Deep Meditation turning into 5 mana is probably going to affect the least, because if you can have uh, Deep Meditation cost 2 less after you play two, 2 spells the previous turn, then it'll cost 3 mana, and playing a three mana deep meditation is really nice with a Heimerdinger, because then your Heimerdinger will make the um, the three one turret at three mana, which is the the most valuable turret, basically. So having this be three mana could could be really good. Now it's not it's not that easy to make this cost three mana. You have like flash of brilliance and stuff like that, but maybe this isn't a, a three of in this kind of deck anymore. It probably is though it probably is but say maybe not but um hibernator still is gonna have deep meditation be pretty good and, and deep meditation's not like going anywhere it'll still see play it's just maybe not like a three of automatic in all the ionia decks now um do you believe hibernator will change vi I think you mean like, do you think that that Heimerdinger decks will take out Vi and play something else? And I would say the answer, I I don't think so. Um, no, I don't think so. Unless, uh, yeah, like there's there's definitely different variants. Like like, you can play Heimerdinger with, with different cards. You know, Karma plus Heimerdinger, uh, basically all the control champions you can play with Heimerdinger. You can kind of play, you can play them like all together. Karma, Heimerdinger, um, Lux, Ezreal. They can all pair with any of the other ones and, and be just fine. But I do like Vi as being a good blocker, good removal spell, um, all that kind of stuff. I think it does fit in here really well. Um, with that being said, Vi, the, the, the problem with Vi Heimerdinger moving forward is the decks that go over the top of it. Like, how is Vi Heimerdinger beating, or Weimerdinger, how is Weimerdinger beating Karma Ezreal? Like, how are they beating Ezreal? That's pretty tough, honestly. Like, this deck, like, they're both very slow decks kind of setting up. Ezreal has that combo finish. It's, like, there's times that you just high roll and you have Heimerdinger plus, like, multiple Flash of Brilliances, and that, that beats everything. You know, but there's, but, uh, well, I mean, I guess... They still have Static Shocks. So yeah, like the Ezreal decks are, of course, playing all the Static Shocks they, they possibly can. Those are very good against 3-1 turrets. So if there's more Ezreal in the format, and Ezreal's a winner, I think that that hurts Heimerdinger, I think. Um, besides that, uh, the the decks, the deep decks, maybe maybe like they can also go over the top of Heimerdinger. But Heimerdinger does seem very good against uh mid-range decks and everything like that and of course sometimes you just hybridinger just wins games for you um this uh this is mobile addicts trunks like if you just go to the click on the the you know like if you just go to any of my deck list pages it's just it's the same site. You just go to the left. There's a meta tier list on the left. That's what we're looking at right now. Okay, so I think I don't think Vibrandinger is a worse deck, and it's I think it may be potentially a little bit better with Deep Meditation being three mana. So I don't think this deck uh, declined any. 
but I think the metagame may hurt it a little bit with Ezreal. If, if Ezreal becomes bigger, um, could hurt this metagame, but maybe like less burn is probably good for this deck. Burn Burn's a tough matchup for this deck. So less burn is good because burn was one of the worst matchups. There's less like withering whales. That's good because of these turrets and everything. So we'll have to see, like, like how is this deck against Bilgewater? I think this deck's probably pretty decent against Bilgewater. Like, Heimerdinger can just go over the top. It's hard for Bilgewater decks to kill Heimerdinger. I think this deck, so maybe this deck gets gets better. It, it kind of depends on like between Bilgewater, Ezreal, what what really gets bigger. Um, I think I'm expecting both of those decks to increase, Bilgewater and and uh, Ezreal, and I think it's worse, you know, Ezreal getting bigger is bad for this, Bilgewater getting bigger is probably good for this. <clears throat> yeah, all right, so Karma Ezreal, you don't see Ezreal beating, you don't think Ezreal beats Bilgewater? All right, but yeah. So anyway, Karma Ezreal, I I do think this deck's gotten a lot better, even with concussive or even with uh, deep meditation and Karma costing more. Um, I think that this specific list would need to change a little bit, and everything. There's things I don't really like about it, like I've talked about with Eye of the Dragon. Um, not a, really a big fan of Jury Rig. Um, yeah, I'm not not a big fan of Jury Rig these days. Uh, but um, yeah. More, the slower the metagame is, the better for Ezreal. That's kind of just the that's just kind of what it comes down to. This is a card that this finish that it has, whether you want to call it a combo finish or whatever you want to call it, Ezreal's win condition is the best thing to be doing in a slow metagame. Just probably the singular best thing to be doing. And so therefore, if the metagame's slower, which it almost certainly should be, with a worse burn deck and with a worse grizzled ranger and with a worse loyal badger bear those things were things that sped up the metagame quite a bit with all of those with those aspects being nerfed the metagames should certainly be slower and therefore that's only good for ezreal um the the removal spells and everything may need to change to um, accommodate whatever uh, you know the decks that get big um, yeah the patch will be live about 1 p.m. Eastern tomorrow yeah Ezreal doesn't do well with wide boards that is tr I mean that can be true but I think I think they can they can I think they have tools to, to be just fine against wide boards. Again, I don't like this. This list here doesn't look very good. I like I would play more gotcha that you know will be two mana sometimes. Um, I don't know, but I, th I think they they can deal with with the wide boards if the creatures are small enough. I think like Demacia decks, like where the creatures are bigger and they're harder to kill and creatures that don't die to like get excited, gotcha, um, Static Shock, you know, things like that could be very good. Being aggressive with larger creatures. Um, it's possible that like, you know, Swain, Vladimir, Sejuani decks, like those kind of things, maybe those can put enough pressure and be and have a wide variety of threats that are difficult to deal with that can uh beat ezreal i think that's that's where you're looking at if you're an ezreal deck is how do we how do we beat um those kind of decks how do we how do we beat the crimson decide the new crimson disciple decks um you know like that's that's what you got to be targeting whenever you're putting together your spell package <clears throat> um i don't think that I think that Ezreal Karma was pretty weak in the previous metagame. Like, the one that we just had. I think that this was actually... Like, I don't know. It says that it's S-tier. There's a lot of these rankings that I don't agree with. I think that this this list was not very good. 
but I think it got a lot better. All right, mid-range Bannerman. Um, this list is all Demacia spells. Everybody knows that Vi was a lot better than Garen. I don't know why their list has Garen and not Vi. Um, oh, the, the card art here, it says Vi, but then the list here says Garen. I don't know what that's all about. Uh, two Unyielding Spirits is unnecessary. You can play, like, maybe one. I don't know. There's... So things that aren't great. But anyway, uh, what's up, Scrub Lord? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, like, again, I don't love every single one of these lists, but this this deck definitely got worse. I know it's it did it's not killed, though. Like, it's not going anywhere. Like, it's still going to be playable. Uh, there are some people that's been saying that they wish that Demacia got hurt even more. I, I don't think they need to get hurt anymore. Like, if... In a month, if Demacia is still really, really good, they can do some more nerfs. But I don't think they—I don't think it's good to take a take one deck and then nerf, you know, like four cards and make it really bad uh, right away. Um, but it definitely got hurt. Like Grizzled Ranger, Loyal Badger Bear, these getting nerf definitely hurt it. Now, I, th as I was saying, I think that maybe the thing to do is start looking towards Shen and. Seeing if Shen replace, replaces Bannerman, Laurent Protégé replaced Badger Bear, you get a lot better one drop than Scythria with the, I think it's Green Glade Caretaker, I think. But the, you know, the one mana card that cares about barriers, that, that one drop is awesome. Um, and, and uh, you know, moving towards, moving towards that. Get a few barrier cards in here. Um, you know, I played I played the Shen deck yesterday. I played, you know, basically I played that deck yesterday. We went four one in Masters before uh, the nerfs and everything, which will hurt Grizzled Ranger. I didn't play Badger Bear, but that'll hurt Grizzled Ranger. But I think Grizzled Ranger still stays in the deck. I think it's still good enough. Um, as far as regular Bannerman decks, I think you're probably still wanting to go with Protege, not Badger Bear, and. Um, I think you stick with Ranger. I think your four drops are Bannerman and Grizzled Ranger, and you play Protege instead of Badger Bear. Um, or you could go Vanguard Redeemer if you want the card draw. But then, I'm not I'm not sure you still play Garen. I think you'd probably still stick with Vi over Garen. Probably. I don't really feel like we're, we're playing Garen again. Like... If I had to choose like which five drop would be better for this deck, I think I think it's Vi. I think four toughness and or four health and tough. Garen, I don't know. It's it's close. It's closer now. You know, it was definitely Vi before. It's closer now. Um. Yeah, if you can if you can turn on Garen and get the rally, that's definitely good. If you're playing um. Like, so Garen Im improves with, uh, you know, obviously the single combats, but then also the the, other, the new five mana removal spell, um, if you're playing that card also, to help uh, Concerted Strike. Playing Concerted Strike, that also helps uh, Garen level up. So, like, if you're playing Garen, you probably want to be doing some things to kind of help it level up. Um, it... Yeah, I, I did think the Vi was better than Garen before. I think now it's very close. And so I could kind of see either way. Maybe the thing to do... The thing is, is there's there's a lot of good five mana cards. It may be that uh, Bannerman can start looking at other champions to uh, turn to and kind of stick with other five mana cards like um, uh, Radiant Guardian or even the new Scout 5 drop. I think that the new Scout 5 drop is, is good The great horn companion kind of there and and maybe turn towards like zed you know having another great three drop like if you want to take out badger bear if you don't want to play laurent protege if you want like a, a different three drop you know maybe maybe go back to like zed bannerman without vi um that could be an option too <clears throat> yeah you could go lucian senna and get more aggressive that's also an option especially if there's not like 
much burn where you can really tune your deck to be aggressive and uh, have it be a, like aggressive against control decks basically try to have threats that are um good against control maybe you're going like vanguard or you know basically move away from challenge completely go lucian senate go like vanguard redeemer for card draw and things like that and not worry about fiora or draw or uh and challenging and go with, like lucian and zed together and like kind of protecting those and uh be like a tempo deck that could be a really good way to play bannerman um so yeah like that that may be like the yeah that may be the new bannerman like lucian zed um bannerman and make it a, a tempo deck All right, now this deck I think definitely got better. Like, speaking of speaking of like Bannerman decks, is I like the Scout version of Bannerman also. Uh, this could be like the way to go without like if we're thinking about replacing Vi, maybe going Scout route could be good. Like Misfortune could be better with um, like so like there, like there's different things about Misfortune. It could be better now like with with less Badger Bear running around that there was like a you know four four and kind of difficult to go with but then also if but if people are playing more shen and more challenger that's going to be probably worse for misfortune misfortune is also better with the new great horn card i think that the great horn card could be a really good five drop to have in this kind of scout deck um the great horn companion now that thing being a, a five five scout like that's pretty big i like that card um so I don't know, like this, this is just another option. I'm not not sure uh, really where you want to go with Bannerman completely, but you know, Scout didn't get hit too hard. Um, yeah, no, 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 no. Yeah, you definitely play Quinn first. It'd be if you want more than three five drops. Yeah, you'd play the Scout uh, Great Horn Companion after Quinn. You definitely play Quinn first. Quinn's definitely better. Um, but if you if you don't want to play, like basically, if you want to have a different champion, like if you want to have like a Fiora with a Misfortune, um, or you know like a Lucian or you know something like that, if you want to have like a, a lower cost champion, like you know maybe like if you don't want to play Badger Bears anymore and you want to play Fioras instead, for example, you could replace Quinn with the other five drop, also. Uh, question is, would crafting scout be a bad move? I really like the deck. Then no, no. Especially if, if you really like the deck, you should craft it. You know, you should craft what you really like. Um, nothing is perfect. There's not, you're, there's not like a single deck that saying wait and craft this deck because this deck is going to be the deck that wins all the games and you need to go play this deck because this is the best deck. Like... Every, they really do a great job balancing this game and everything is so close and every deck beats every other deck you know sometimes and and everything like that and so if there's anything that you really like that's where you go craft and and enjoy it and keep keep tuning it and keep you know switching out cards and find the the perfect cards for you and and for the metagame and things like that don't just like play the same stock list over and over for weeks on end like you know, keep tinkering. See, see if you can find um, some different avenues to attack and different cards that you really like. All right, deep sea monsters. Definitely a deck that got better. I I really like deep sea monsters moving forward. I do think it needs to change a little bit. I think it needs to be more focused on Demacia decks like Shen, Shen Demacia, or just other other Demacia decks, like mid-range decks like that, plus uh, bigger Crimson Disciple, Vladimir, Swain, Sejuani, like that, all that kind of stuff. I think it needs to focus on uh, beating those kind of decks more than beating Burn. And so what I mean by that is that our removal suite needs to kind of change. Like Vile Feast and Withering Whale are great against Burn, but they're not very good against the, the bigger decks. So I think Withering Whale goes away vile feast probably goes away and we can replace those with with better removal for bigger things now what is that in deep sea monsters not exactly sure that's probably a ruination 
maybe two. That's probably a vengeance, maybe two. Um, that's probably getting like the third grass, the undying. Bilgewater probably has something else also, you know, that's a little cheaper than grass. Like there's probably something else in the two, three, four mana slot. Maybe, I don't know, maybe Black Spear because you can have your your things die and use. I don't know. I'd have to kind of look through the, the list of cards and everything. But we're probably playing a Ruination in here. Um, and probably a vengeance also, and then you know, and and uh, you know, trying to get some other cheaper things, um, and you know, maybe not all the withering whales or vile fees. Uh, let's see. And also, I'm probably going three Maokai, no Thresh. I think Maokai is going to be really important. I think we're just going three Maokai, three Nautilus. I think you really, really want uh, Maokai. Um. <laughs> Yeah, Scrub Lord, that's tough. That's tough, like actually choosing. You got, you know, that's, that's the hard part is actually choosing what to craft. Nobody can choose that b besides you. Just all you have to do though is craft, you know, the, the thing is, is, okay, so Scrub Lord says, I literally don't know what to craft. I can make Deep or I can make Levi or Vladimir or finally go to the dark side and make a Yasuo deck. I'm paralyzed by the choice. So the thing is, is like your, your choice isn't final. The reward, the rewards in this game are really good. You'll have enough. Just keep playing. You'll have enough stuff to make another deck shortly. You know, in you know a couple weeks or whatever. And so, uh, whatever you choose, you just you know need like if you're you know going free to play, and if you're like have like the resources for one deck right now, just choose something that you like. Even if there's other things that you like, also don't worry about it. Just find something that you like. Choose that. Make that and uh go go towards that and be able to play that for a couple of weeks and and keep earning shards and wild cards and you'll get another thing that you like shortly so don't don't lament on what you don't have yet find something you like craft that enjoy that and then whenever you have the resources you can craft something else um Oh, you're welcome, Delta Cruz. Cool. Glad, yeah, glad those changes made the Twisted Yasuo deck a lot better afterwards. Awesome. Awesome, awesome. Hey, little Killy, I'm doing good. Hope you're doing good, too. All right, but anyway, yeah, so definitely like this moving forward. But yeah, definitely want three Maokai, three Nautilus. And uh, yeah, maybe, maybe we're changing up our removal suite. Maybe we're going like more thor Thorny Toad, or maybe we're going like more threats in general. Like, that could be something that, like, if we're not playing as much removal because you don't need them against burn, maybe you're playing just more threats that can match up against, whoops, sorry, Demacia decks or against control decks, um, things like that. Endure Spiders. This one's kind of tough. Obviously, Brood Awakening being six mana is bad. But this deck could be pretty good, even with that. Even just making Brood Awakening six mana, playing you know basically the same deck. I don't love this list at all, by the way. Like, gosh, these yeah, these lists aren't the best on here. Like, we're playing three Warden's Praise. What are we? What are we doing? Anyway. Um, but honestly, like in this endure list is probably still pretty good because I think this is really this kind of deck's really good against control. Like we're probably not playing three withering whales anymore, um, and you know I, I would still play the brood awakening. So I think this this is the kind of deck where brood awakening at six mana is still good enough, and we're still playing it. Um, but I think that uh, just the the combo finish of endure atrocity again, you want. If in a slower metagame, you want ways to go over the top, and this is definitely a deck that can go over the top and can just win games right away with They Who Endure and Atrocity. So yeah, I like it. I like. I think this deck is one that could match up against your your deep sea monsters and your Ezreal's of the world and and things like that, um, and can just go yeah go over the top. If less the less aggro people are playing, you know, then the more free to roam a lot of these. Uh, smaller creatures are. I think this deck's good against Bilgewater. Um, even though Bilgewater has Make It Rain and uh, the red card from Twisted Fate.
Bilgewater ducks kill very slowly. And if you can get, like, they'll they'll kill all your stuff, but if you can get They Who Endure plus Atrocity, if you can get that combo, you're beating Bilgewater. Um, I've played a whole lot of Bilgewater, and I've lost that combo a whole bunch. <laughs> that's a difficult, that's a difficult one, pal. When you're a Bilgewater player. All right, we've talked about Levi. Uh, well, kind of. We talked about Lee Sin a bunch in the loser section. I'm not a fan of this Levi deck too much moving forward. I think that the other the other decks, your Karma Lux, your Karma Ezreal, um, even your Vi, your Heimerdinger or Vi, I think like those kind of things, those are all decks I'm more interested in playing than the Lee Sin version that really re relies on playing a bunch of spells. Deep Meditation costing more really hurts but then also i think that uh it's just a very slow win con and i think that when you have a slow win con you would think that like your slow win cons better in the slower medic game but this kind of slow win con was actually better in the faster meta game because it could go over the top of the the faster decks but if it's the slower meta game where people have better faster win cons in the slow decks like ezreal like maokai like even um they who enter. I'm much more interested in doing those things than doing Lee Sin. You are punching stuff, or kicking things, I guess, right? You're, you get to kick things and punch. So you get to punch and kick. That is cool. And you do have Deny and you do have Will of Ionia. Now, there's only one copy of each in, in here, which is kind of silly, um, especially Will of Ionia. But, and you know, so you can, you can kind of... Uh, you know, you can play some more of those and stop a they who endure combo or, or whatever, but yeah, not not too big on this deck moving forward. Alright, Swain Twisted Fate. Now this is a deck I am I do really like going forward. I like how uh Swain can give you the like you have your, your Bilgewater cards that are awesome. Bilgewater didn't get hit and you have all those awesome Bilgewater cards, but then um, getting some direct damage with Swain and Swain gives you like that aggressiveness to help finish games out um, this list looks very bad um, like deckhand and petty officer I would not play those cards whatsoever got to get crimson disciple in here and get jagged butcher like not having a one drop in this deck is really silly like jagged butcher needs to be in here it's silly one riptide rex three leviathans come on but anyway, uh, I, I definitely like this kind of deck moving forward, though. I think that, uh, like, this deck doesn't have life gain, and so it could, you know, would struggle against, like, burn decks if, if they got enough damage and then would just have enough um, burn spells to finish it off. If there's less burn around, that's definitely good for this. Um, the, the steel cards, your pilfer goods, your black market merchants, those are great against control. Um, but going with Noxus gives you the direct damage route to win games against the slower control decks that are killing all your stuff or even against like your your karma luxes things like that that can have raiding guardian around you can get some get early damage in and then hopefully finish games with direct damage maybe steal a will of ionia or two um so yeah i like i like uh this uh, twisted fate swain combination even if this list isn't any good Okay, uh, standalone, definitely going down. This deck was, um, you know, flipping coins already, and now your your coin is, if you need to hit he heads, your coin is weighted in tails now because your most important card costs four mana. I think it makes sense for them to kind of nerf that though, because as they said in the um, patch updates. It's just not a very enjoyable card to play against, and just not enjoyable play patterns with standalone. So it makes a lot of sense to nerf that card. Um, it's not unplayable, but it's definitely not as good. Um, yeah, but it's not just completely dead. Keg control. Okay, so this is like. Okay, so this is Dreadway combo.
Um. Hmm. There's a lot of cards I don't like in this deck. It's kind of about it. I I think you can make a Bilgewater Shadow Isles control deck. I have a, a version of this of like Ledros Dreadway that I like a lot more. Um, playing three more powders. Yuck, yuck. There's there's a lot of yeah. There's just a lot of cards I don't like in this deck. But is okay. Anyway, not talking about the specific list, but just like the idea is like Shadow Isles Bilgewater control. Um, it's kind of better and worse. It's the better part is it didn't get hit. Like this kind of deck didn't really get hit at all. Um, but the worst part is if there's less burn around, there's less things for like make a rain, vile feast, withering whale. Like those, like uh, those may not be as good. Now if there's like more like elusives around. Like make it rain is great against elusives, and, and just kind of make it rain in general. I think could be getting a little better. Because it's it's still you know it kills like you know kills that three one but it's still gonna be a good card but I think the withering whale is just a little s slower I think they it got hurt some I don't know that's kind of weird but uh okay so this deck is entirely dependent on having kegs in play yeah it just doesn't seem like a kind of deck that I want to be playing against you know endure spiders or, or just like especially this kind of list you know uh, deep endure spiders Ezreal. I don't think this is really where I want to be. I, yeah, so no, I, I don't like this list at all. Basically, yeah, I just don't like that list. <clears throat> um. Okay. Yeah. Just a little run. So I, um, we've just been having a discussion day. I talked about, I had 10 winners from the patch. I had 10 losers from the patch. Both of those YouTube videos will be going up tonight. This video right now, what we're doing is we're going through Mobile Addicts, kind of doing a quick reset for everybody here on Twitch that just joined. Um, going through Mobile Addicts meta tier list and talking about each deck and whether uh, it, the deck's going up or down in value. And we're, we're towards the end. We got four more to do. Um... um I don't know what the patch is in EU West time. It is, um, if you think about like tomorrow, so, so it's 1 p.m. Eastern, which right now it is 621 Eastern. So subtract five hours and 21 minutes from now, tomorrow. And that's when it is. So yeah, it's currently 621 Eastern and, and it's around one Eastern. Okay. Uh, Karma Maokai control, I like it. I think this this deck could definitely be uh, could definitely be better than what it was. Now, I don't think this deck was very good before. We played it, and it was definitely not as good as other uh, Sh Shadow Isles Karma decks. And I think there are definitely better Shadow Isles Karma decks. But specifically, this deck, Karma Maokai control, this deck is better after the patch than what it is before. It was... Um, it's a deck that's really good against slow decks, and so if there are slower decks, and if the metagame is slower, that's where this deck gets better, because the deck relies on leveling up Maokai and el eliminating the library, basically, to win, or, or having uh, late game just a bunch of Rekindler Karma, so it's a super, super slow deck. Um, it's still like not that great at that, like Ezreal combo could just kill it, uh, the other maokai toss decks can level up faster and get rid of your your deck and you just have to hope you have infinite karmas to keep cards in your deck this deck's not not great and we really like we played this deck one time really struggled with it it's not like an option i'd recommend but i do think it's probably better um after the patch than before sejuani swain though this deck i really like i, I think this deck was one of the better mid-range decks um so I really don't like these rankings at all, but I think this was one of the one of the better mid range decks before the patch and after the patch. I think this deck gains a lot because it, it's not like nothing's getting hurt from this deck. Everything else is kind of slowing down, like burn slowing down. Demacia is weaker. Um, everything else is 
you know, I think overall the power of the, the, the whole format overall has gone down. I think there are more nerfs than buffs and, um, especially, especially with played cards. And so I think overall thing cards are weaker. And so going with a deck like this, where nothing changed, I think that's, uh, it's going to be better. And I already thought this was, this was like one of my uh, sleepers as a, a deck that was sneaky good that a lot of people were sleeping on. And I think it's just gotten better. <laughs> I know. I have so many Sejuani and so many Swain decks and so many Twisted Fate decks. We've played so much Twisted Fate, Swain, Sejuani. And those are those are three champions that I really liked before, and they're they are all looking good moving forward. So yeah, really like Sejuani Swain. Yeah, I, I think this is a tier one deck in, in my opinion. I'd, especially after patch, I think that would be like a you know an S tier deck. In my opinion. Uh kind of the same with this Kinku Elusives. I think Kinku Elusives is, is real good now. Of course, so I have the championless elusive deck. I don't have Zed in it. At the end of the last video, we took out Kinku Wayfinder um, and re replaced that. Because, um, you know, I'm going with Shared Spoils and I'm going with uh, Fury of the North. I think Fury of the North is awesome in here. So, you know, I'm, so my list is a little different than this. Just like my list is a little different than that Sejuani Swain list, of course, too. But I, I think this could be, uh, we talked about this in the winners. I think this could be a really good option moving forward. It was a little slower and less consistent than burn aggro and that really hurt it but if there's less burn aggro then this could be a good way to fight some of these other mid-range decks like even like karma ezreal you have um you have enough ways to pump your creatures to make the make it hard to kill stuff with the piltover and zon removal spells you know between omen hawk i have shared spoils in mine um you know fury of the north elixir of iron um jewel protector you have a lot of ways, um, even Twin Disciplines there, to protect stuff. So against like Karma Lux, this deck is awesome. Um, now, having like Omen Hawks and Shared Spoils, not always the best against Bilgewater. If Bilgewater, like Bilgewater can, if they have like your Steel Card stuff, they could steal like your pumped up Elusives and, and make it like pretty annoying. Yeah, like they steal, like they play Black Market Merchant, take your Navori Conspirator, play Conspirator, bounce Black Market Merchant, replay Black Market Merchant. That's yuck. I wonder if we should make a Navori Conspirator Black Market Merchant deck and have that combo together. Hmm. Maybe we should make that deck. Yeah, burn is kind of what keep, yeah keeps the elusives in check for sure. Elusives is definitely powered down since before, but still real good. And yeah, uh, I think it's I think it's definitely better and championless version that I'm playing. It's very budget friendly, and uh, could be like the new budget friendly deck to replace burn potentially. Yeah, Will of Ionia is good against buffed followers, for sure, for sure. For sure. But, but yeah, good deck. All right, and then finally, Yasuo. My favorite version of Yasuo compare, combines Yasuo and Swain. The problem with this kind of deck, like where you're, this kind of deck is just too reliant on having Yasuo. And too reliant, like too much stun. Where stun doesn't actually like remove anything. It just you know slows the opponent down. But if all you do is slow them down, you're just kind of de de delaying the inevitable. As as a person over in the YouTube comments the other day put it, I think that's a good way of putting it. Um, we did play a Twisted Fate Yasuo deck yesterday, also, that was awesome. Especially with the changes that we made afterwards. It was a donation deck from Delta Cruz. And um, uh, and Del Delta Cruz has been playing it a bunch with the, the changes and saying that it's looking a lot better. 
So yeah, I, I like I like that. But I basically don't think that you can go all in Yasuo and just only rely on Yasuo and play all stun stuff because it's just there's just not enough games where you're gonna draw Yasuo and like this other stuff isn't good enough to win games. I think you have to have another powerful champion and kind of have like a, a a plan 1A and a plan 1B and kind of go at it that way. So whether you're going Yasuo plus Swain or Yasuo plus Twisted Fate, but I do think those those decks are. Um, Probably a little better than before because they, you know, they haven't got, they didn't get hit at all where other decks did get hit. Um, it kind of depends on the format though because those decks don't really stop Ezreal and they can, they can definitely struggle against the deep decks that, you know, they have that ability to uh, go bigger. Same with the en Endure plus Atrocity, that can also be a struggle. But they're probably like pretty decent against the uh, the new Demacia decks. Probably pretty decent there. It's a good good, good mid range deck against other mid range decks, kind of thing. Okay, all right. So that's that's Yasuo Control. So that's the that's the new uh, that's just kind of like a meta game breakdown of like what's going to happen with all these decks. We we will likely see some some new decks also. You know, there's there's no Vladimir in here. There's no Shen in here. I definitely want to play those. Um, those of y'all watching this uh, later on YouTube, let me know in the comments what do you want me to play? What like what are you really excited to see after the patch? Um, yeah, give me those ideas and I'll I'll make them happen. Definitely Reaper. Um, all right, but uh, that's it here for our metagame breakdown. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for a brand new format. All right, take care.